Hi there, Asta. So let's take a look at the set of essays you sent us. The first one is about uh, international marketing. So let's see what you said here. Modern trade practices have turned the world in, into a small marketplace. Worldwide business trends are considered to be intruding towards the country by some individuals, whereas many others assert that it is essential in order to exchange knowledge, culture, as well as ideas. Okay. I also strongly believe in the interchange of local traditions and skills through exports and imports of goods and services. All right. So um, the grammar is fine. There is some nice vocabulary here, but there is one uh, thing that concerns me. In your attempt to rephrase the task and use your own words, you've gone a step too far, actually. And um, you've changed around the language so much that we can't even recognize the question. So when you talk about trade practices, okay, and uh, when you talk about worldwide business trends, I mean, we have now lost this idea of international marketing because these are very different things, okay? So you needed to somehow include uh, either the expression international marketing, it's not bad if you use it um, somewhere in your introduction. You have to use something that resembles international marketing, but these terms, modern trade practices and worldwide business trends, they are not synonymous. And so what has happened is, is we are not completely familiar and we're, we don't understand what the topic is. So if you didn't have it in front of you, you wouldn't be able to understand that this is about international marketing at all, okay? Okay, so let's move on. So, seldom would a country favor the situation where its imports exceed the exports. Regardless, almost every developing nation is suffering from surplus imports. As a result, comma, domestic businesses, comma, especially those on a small scale, comma, take a toll. Mm, okay, um, they, I'm not sure about this, they take a toll. It's not that the businesses take a toll, it's that this takes a toll on businesses. So you have to learn how to use this expression um, grammatically correct. Consequently, the economy of that particular country becomes over-dependent on exports with diminishing gross with a diminishing gross domestic product. For instance, a majority of mobile phones used in India are manufactured in China. Indian companies like Micromax and Carbon have registered heavy losses due to this trend. Thus, in a way, international business uh, does weaken the local markets. Okay, so what you really talked to us about here, Asta, is is um, imports and exports. You've talked about you know international trade. What you have not talked about at all is international marketing, which uh, may fall under the general umbrella of international trade, but it is certainly not the same thing. So international trade is something far more specific. All right, um, but you didn't really talk about it at all. So an examiner looking at this is going to think that it's uh, an off-topic response, okay? So on the other hand, in this era of globalization, a country might not survive without dealing with other countries. Should international trade mm -mm, should international trade be abolished, the chances to exchange knowledge and culture lessen considerably. When a foreign product is launched in a market, it drives its local competitors to raise their own products up to its level. On e-commerce platforms like Etsy, merchants all over the world exhibit and sell their not produce. Produce just refers to fruits and vegetables, so their products, uh, thereby enriching their knowledge and absorbing colors of other cultures in the world. Okay, let's take a look at this paragraph now a little bit. All right, so here again, you're talking about international trade, which is inappropriate. You have to talk about the marketing itself. Now, here you did talk about um, foreign products being launched. And, but again, it's really all about trade and not about marketing. So I would definitely recommend uh, doing a little research on international marketing, uh, trying to understand really what it's about and what it means. And in doing so, I think you'll understand why 
uh, this essay comes off as being off topic. All right. Um, and here, even your example of Etsy, how does this talk about marketing? How are we talking about, um, you know, and a, a marketing being a necessary and economical form of education? You talked about it a little. Okay, yeah, you did a little bit. But again, you have to tie this all into international marketing and much less so international trade, okay? So in conclusion, trade among nations may prove unyielding for some local sellers, but in my opinion, it is necessary and provides exchange of ideas in an economical way. Therefore, it should be encouraged, D, for the world's economy to grow as a whole. All right, so there's um, a lot of nice things about this essay. In general, I thought your grammar was good. You had some advanced grammatical expressions. They didn't always come off... Um, with perfect accuracy, okay, like this here when you wrote, uh, should international trade be abolished? Um, so there were some mistakes, but I liked that you tried some of these advanced grammatical structures, um, and that's really important. So you have an awareness of them, which is great. Uh, now we just have to work on getting these more accurate, okay? And then just some of the little grammatical things that didn't create incoherence, but still there were some consistent errors with um, articles and things like that. Okay, so those are some of the things that I want you to look at in terms of grammar. Vocabulary, I thought you did a nice job of. The structure, I thought, of your essays, uh, your, your essay was good. You supported your arguments, you had ideas. So a lot of this um, was good. For me, the weak point in this essay, of course, was this task achievement element. The fact that you didn't really answer the question, but you answered um, a different topic. That was the biggest weakness. And then, um, you know, there were some little grammatical things happened, but those uh, that was a, a lesser issue. Now I want to take a look at your task one, okay? All right, so now let's move on to your task one. This is about the English and Homestay program. So let's see what you said. Dear Mr. Smith, don't forget your comma here. It's necessary. I am Asa Asta, a student of fine arts from India. I have been selected for the English and Homestay program in London. I am obliged uh, to you for accepting me as your guest. This will be my first visit to the United Kingdom and I cannot control the excitement. As a first time visitor, I have many questions regarding the trip. What is the weather like in the last week of April? Do I need to bring my warmer clothing? Moreover, I have heard it rains quite often. Will it spoil my plans for sightseeing in the city? Also, as a guest, please let me know of any instructions I should follow during my stay. As my program is from uh, the 20th of April till 30th of April, um, I will reach London a day before, i.e., comma here, and comma, 19th of April. My flight will land at 1 p.m., and I will take a taxi to reach your home, not your place. Looking forward to meeting, I-N-G, you and your family. Regards. Okay, comma here. So, uh, let's see. Now, as far as the word count goes, you were okay. It was 157 words. We don't count these in, actually, we don't count that either. So, it's 156. Uh, so, it was fine as far as the word count goes. You covered everything. So, you introduced yourself. You asked some questions. And you also... Uh, discussed how you're going to get to the home and your time, your arrival, all that stuff. So you covered everything in terms of task achievement, so that's fine. Um, one thing that I want to mention to you is the tone of this uh, email, or another word we use for it is the register. You don't know Mr. Smith. You've never met him before, all right, even though he has offered to host you. So, for that reason, this really should be considered a formal letter. He's not your friend, okay? And so you should um, opt for more formal language. What does that mean? That means, number one, no contractions. So, no can't, no I've, 
no I've again. Uh, it also means that you really need to reduce the number of direct questions you ask. So here, what's the weather like in the last week of April? You want to use some indirect questions instead. Could you please tell me uh, what I should expect uh, in terms of weather in the last week of April? Or I would like to know what the weather is usually like at the end of April. Okay? Or would it be possible to learn about uh, typical weather at the end of April? All right, all of these are considered more formal expressions and language to ask questions. All right, you can see here that you had a number of direct questions. You had one, two, three. All right, and so um, I wanted you to um, reduce these, okay? Not so many of them. Do I need to bring my warmer clothing? So instead you could have said something like, um, uh, I would like to know if you advise me to bring clothing for warmer weather or not. All right, that would have been a way you could have said this. So these are some of the changes that I suggest, and it's important uh, to show that you know how to use these indirect questions. Um, this was fine. Another thing that we do in formal letter writing is we don't use this type of ellipsis looking forward to meeting you. It's I look forward to meeting you. All right, it's more formal. Um, the regards was okay. But again, I would prefer that you err on the side of caution. You did know his name. You used his name. So here, an appropriate sign-off would have been yours sincerely. Just play it safe, okay, because it is IELTS. So those are some of the things I would like you to change, okay? Um, on the whole, it was fine. Um, you had some nice elements. Again, some good vocabulary, some good grammar, but some things also that I wanted you to correct so that you could, um, you know, work towards that score that you're probably hoping to get, okay? So uh, that's the feedback for the set of essays. Um, I would love to see more of your work. I would love to see how you write other essays as well as other letters. So uh, see if you can sign up to one of the programs that we have here. I think that maybe even the, um, the essay correction package alone would be um, beneficial to you because you've got some nice elements to your writing, but we really just need to take all of these elements that you have and put them together so that you can get the score you need. All right, see what works for you, and I look forward to seeing more of your essays, so good luck.